Hello, if you're new here, we're Ant and Emma and we live full time off grid on our 70 foot narrowboat William Gladstone with our two dogs Domino and Sophie. Join us this week for something a little bit different. We're not cruising, I'm not fixing anything, we're going to sit down and talk about how much it costs us to live on our boat. If you don't want all the waffle and you're just here for the numbers, feel free to skip to 33 minutes and 5 seconds. We won't be offended, honest. So, what have you got in there? Um, it's alcohol o'clock. Where's my drink? Alcohol, drink? we haven't we haven't budgeted for that on here. <laughs> right, no, so I think it's important before we get into the numbers. Um, this this isn't how much it's going to cost you to live on a boat. It's how much it costs us, us to, to live on a boat. boat. Like everybody's situation's it's... different. So like. It's we're not anything in life. Everyone's got a different situation. But if you buy a house, you have a car, whatever, you've yeah, got everyone's a different still, way yeah, of Everyone's going to have yeah. different expenses still. So there's no point in us saying, oh, our shopping costs this much or our car costs that much because some people don't have a car on a boat. And, and we you know, eat too much. We, <laughs> yeah, we eat different to everybody else. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, it, it's just boating related expenses and it's our mm. boating related expenses because again, every boat's different, you know, our boat's 50 years old, so... Might it's older than me. It's older than... That's, that's old. Um, so yeah, it might need a bit more maintenance than some. So. I do. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's our cost of living on a boat. Yeah. So we, we're going to run through them it's all very unique. Uh, and let you know what they are. There might be some that you haven't thought of or... You know, some things might be more expensive or cheaper than than you thought. Mm. So, let's get cracking, shall we? And as if by magic, a dog has appeared. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think we will start with the biggest expense of living on a boat. The dogs. No, <laughs> it is buying a boat. Mm. Everybody's situation is going to be different again, whether you want a fixer upper, depends on how big your boat is, how old your boat is or whatever. Um, we've had a look. And I don't think we'd buy anything that was on the market for less than about sort of twenty grand because I don't know, even even that's a fixer mm. upper at twenty grand, but then yeah. they can range all the way up to bloody oh, quarter, be silly money. quarter of a million for a brand new seventy foot wide beam or whatever. But you know, you know what boat you're happy to live in, so that's yeah. that's each their own on that and one. you can't really get a boat mortgage we, we looked and it was you can you can get boat easy, mortgages but yeah you need there was normally something... heavy deposits and stuff and and they don't normally like doing it on older uh, on there was something older we, boats we but there are reason. different financing options mm. out there once you've got your boat you then got to figure out how you're going to get it to where you want it whether you're going to cruise it or get it transported so there's another cost but again it's you know it's, diff it's, it's different to everybody mm. so let's get into some numbers shall we mm. Once you've got your boat, you can't put it on the water unless it's licensed and insured and it's got a boat safety certificate. So your boat safety certificate, certificate is it's not really like a car MOT. It's, it's a lot more relaxed than a car MOT. Like your car MOT will tell you whether your, your car's roadworthy. Your, your boat safety certificate, although I can't say that <laughs> word, it makes sure your boat is safe, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be in the best condition if it's oh, really? safe. Yeah, it checks so, your electrical on. systems, your gas systems, and but if it fails the boat safety, then you can't get your ins you can't get insurance. So no, so it must be a little bit yeah, strict. It is. It is a little bit strict. But what I'm saying is, you can you can have a boat that looks rough as anything on the outside, That's, and um, you might not yeah, deem it so livable, but it's technically boat safe. Is, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, that costs you, uh, it's about £200 for your boat safety. It varies, it varies depending on whether you've got gas on board. If you've got gas on board, it's slightly more expensive. Um, so that's £200, and that lasts for four years. Um, so if you average that out, it's £4.16. pence. Um, I'm going to put all these say, numbers... Yeah, at, at, at the end... Wait for you to stop, so I'm going to ask that question. At the end, <laughs> we'll whiz through all the numbers and I'll pop them up on the screen, so you don't need to worry. Um, yeah, so £4.16 every oh, month, put aside for your boat safety every yeah. every four years. And if you haven't touched anything on your boat, chances are, in the four years, nothing will have changed and it will, it will still be safe. If you're changing batteries or stuff like that or getting rid of gas appliances then you know then you might need to have some work done in order to pass your boat safety the next time 
Uh, insurance, insurance will vary greatly depending on the age of your boat and then the uh -huh. age of your boat. Um, and the number of years you've been cruising or not? Yeah, so it can go down once you've got a bit more experience. Mm. Um, your insurance company might stipulate a few extra things depending on the age of your boat as well. So because we're over 40 years old, our insurance company want a, a survey done every uh. five years. Um, our I insurance... Mm, no, you do. Our insurance for a 70 foot boat, again, it'll probably be less if you've got a, a smaller boat. Or a younger boat. Yeah, or a younger boat. Our insurance is £435 <laughs> for the year, which works out at roughly £37 per month. Um, and that's like a fully comp insurance, it's not just third party that covers us. What's the difference between fully comp everything. and third party? So, third party will just cover you if you hit into somebody else's boat, it'll cover their damages, but it won't cover the cost of yours. Ah. Every day's a school day. Living what with about like fire and stuff like that? Is that, that well? So you can get you can get different levels of insurance. You can get fully comp, which is what we've got. You can get third party fire and theft, so okay. it'll cover that. Like or you can get third party only, mm -hmm. so you can get all sorts. But every day's a school day. Mm. He's right. Um. So we've done boat safety. We've done insurance. Boat license is is next. Um. They don't really class anything under 18 foot as sort of being livable, <laughs> so uh, you still have to pay, you still have to pay for anything under 18 foot, but I think it's like £60 we pound or something. Do, we? Yeah, you can get away with, if, if you've got a boat, you can get away with having a canoe as a, a tender. It'd be quite so cool, wouldn't it? You don't have to pay a boat licence, but there's certain stipulations, so you always have to be in eyesight of your boat in order to get away You're with joking. it being as a tender, yeah. But oh, anyway, um, so anything above 18 foot is where the real licences sort of start from. Um, an 18 foot boat will cost you £650 for the year, so just over 50 quid a month. We're 70 foot, which is which is about mm. the longest you can get. Where are you going, love? Move, moving, moving the dog, the dog. out of the way. We We're go. 70 foot, which is about the longest you can get. Uh, I think 72 foot is technically the longest you can fit in the locks. Um, yeah. And we are £1,360 for the year. Boat licence is a bit of a touchy subject at the minute amongst boaters because the Canal and River... And me. <laughs> and you, well, you're a boater. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Canal and River Trust have just bought out a new licensing structure, which mm. some people are not too happy with no. um, because it, it sort of penalises constant cruisers which is what we are we're a constant cruiser we don't have a fixed home address if you have a home mooring your license fee is going to stay the same but it will go up with inflation if you don't have a home mooring canal and river trust have said it's going up with inflation but it's also going up five percent year on year so in like four years time for example it will be 20 percent more expensive i can't remember whether that was for four or five years i'm sure someone will let you know in the comments um so yeah, in, in four years time, it will be 20% more expensive for our license. Um, but yeah, if you've got a home mooring, it's not going up, yet you can still cruise the canals and use as much network as you want. It's, it's, it's a bit of a sore subject because constant cruisers quite often get accused of being constant moorers and Canal and River Trust <laughs> complain and say, you're not moving enough, you need yeah. to move more in order to meet your licence. They your sent you an terms. email to tell you that, right? Yeah. We've, we've only had, seen your boat then, you haven't moved it. We've, blah, blah, blah. we've only had one naughty gram because they thought we naughty hadn't gram, yeah. <laughs> We hadn't moved in, in the two weeks. When we, in actual fact, we had, but we turned, turned around, around and we were in a, in a so similar location. So the man location. wasn't that observant, was he? Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, the, the point is, they, they say, oh, you're not moving enough, you need to move more. And then on the other hand, they're then saying, well, actually, you're using more of the facilities, more of the services, you're putting more strain on the system, so we're increasing your licences. So make up your mind, Canal River Trust, which one <laughs> is it? I mean, it's, it's going up, yeah, whatever. Um, I think if you look at it, it's still probably one of the cheapest ways to live, so should we really be complaining that oh it's much. still cheap but yeah. it's just the principle of it isn't i know it? and then then the the other thing is as well so if you if you've got a home mooring um you you pay money to a marina or direct to crt if it's if it's a crt mooring um so yeah you do you are paying those a bit extra but but the thing is a lot of people with home moorings will say maybe four weeks of the year they'll just go out and Got smash cruise. it and do like you know yeah. 200 miles in the busy yeah. season which then puts more strain yeah. but Whatever, we're not going to change we'll the decision. Their, we'll That's pay for them they're... to empty their bins, it's okay. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned bins because included in your licence 
uh, your bins get emptied, we get access to, well I say your bins get emptied, we empty we, our bins we, uh, into yeah. into the bins that they provide for well, us. Well, refuse men or whatever Which aren't probably as numerous as they once were, but there's no. still enough, so don't let that put you off. Yeah, we, and if we, and if and what we tend to do is try and have little bags of sh like rubbish and yeah, so put it in a public let's bin. Let's if we're going out in the car we'll use a, use a bin yeah. somewhere else. So yeah, your licence fee covers you for... 2,000 miles of the network. It doesn't cover all of the rivers. Yeah. Some rivers come under separate authorities. Um, it covers cruising their network, um, the bins. Uh, there's plenty of water points dotted around on the system. Um, mm. And what else did I say it covered? Oh, well, it, it doesn't it, cover. Yeah, it, it <laughs> you doesn't don't have. You don't have your council tax, I suppose. Yeah. So it sort of replaces your your council tax in a in a way because it pays for the facilities that that you use. Uh, I would say the next biggest cost of living on a boat is going to be your fuel. Um, and we can break your fuel down into sort of three categories, really. Um, so you use fuel for, for three things. So moving the boat. Propulsion. Mm. That's what they call it. Heating the boat. Yep. And and cooking. Yep. I suppose they are they, they three main things. And... Again, everybody's situation is going to be different. I mean, there's there's quite a few all-electric boats out there now, so they won't have mm. gas and they won't have diesel. Some of them have a, a diesel backup generator, but their costs will be, be completely different. Um, and people use different fuels in different ways. So our diesel is literally just for the propulsion. Engine. If we wanted to, we could run the engine and it would heat our hot water, but we... We tend not to really. Yeah. We can just heat the hot water off our batteries because yeah. we've got our lithium batteries. Yeah. Um, so yeah, diesel. Uh, we have spent four hundred and eighty pounds in the last twelve months on diesel. Um, not actually a massive amount. I think there's a lot not of people really. out there that will move more than us, so we'll burn. Yeah, because we tend to move every couple of weeks. Yeah, so we, we not... tend to sit for a bit and then move. So except if we're in a rush because we're late for something. <laughs> yeah, but we're only in a rush because we've sat for two weeks. It's just your poor places. Planning. So yeah, forty pound a month basically on on diesel. Um, you could quite easily use double that if you move more often without mm -hmm. a shadow of a doubt. And if you use diesel to heat, heat your hot, your hot water, water or well. diesel central heating like some boats Maybe have, then it's going to be a lot more. Um, but yeah, that's what we pay forty pound a month for our diesel. Um, go on. But the, is there like a trade-off here? Because if you have a diesel heater, you have a different. It's easier to keep your boat at a temperature. Yeah, I think when when we bought the boat, the guy we bought it off, he said everything about living on a boat is a compromise, yes. and I think he's right. So we we don't have diesel heating, so mm -hmm. I think that's good because there's nothing to go wrong. Mm. Uh, our fuel is probably cheaper because mm. all the wood we've never bought wood. In four years no, on the boat, we've always got it for free. Yeah, I'm always to to wom wombling it from, <laughs> right, from somewhere. Wombler, um, but I suppose the compromise is it takes more time and it's it's more effort. So if you've got a diesel heating system, you can turn your thermostat, set it 18 degrees and forget about it. I did say to you earlier that time is money. That's the thing. Yeah. So it does yeah. take you time, but if you think... So it's, it's that compromise, it isn't it? Compromise. Do you want to spend the money or do you want to spend the time? If you've got the money to spend... Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's diesel. That's one of your fuels. Next fuel, gas. A lot of boats out there cook on gas. Um, mm. Like I say, there's a few electric ones out there now. Um, uh, some people use gas for their hot water as well. We have got a gas boiler, but we don't we don't really use it. Again, we use the batteries because it's it's free. Um, we get through roughly four gas bottles a year, and they're about forty pound a pot. So. Uh, what's that a month? They used to be cheaper, though, didn't they? They've gone up. With yeah, they have gone. Else. They have gone up since COVID because there was a shortage of gas bottles, and then mm. people started putting their prices up. So why was there a shortage of gas bottles? Oh, because everyone was having barbecues, and now there's half-empty gas bottles in sitting sheds. in everybody's sheds oh, everywhere. So, right. yeah. Anyway, about thirteen pound a month for gas, and that's purely just for for cooking. If you use it to heat your hot water, it's going to be a lot more. I think our gas may actually, our gas usage may actually go summer, down yeah. this year because we've just bought a uh, just bought an electric kettle, haven't we? Because we we've, we've got more power than we know what to do with in the summer, so we thought, why not go and get the kettle for him, Emma? No. Go and get the kettle. Go no. on. Go and get the kettle. It doesn't need to. Grab happen. the kettle. Go and get the kettle. Show them. 
Show the people. I think it's full of water. Show the people. Go and get your kettle. <laughs> you have a look at this. So we bought our kettle about four weeks ago. You have a look at this. Oh no, it's got too much water in. Come and bring the kettle. The people need to see. Look at this lovely kettle. Nothing to see here. Look Nothing. at this lovely kettle. Nothing to see here. No. Let's just turn it round and show them, show them the nice burns. So we bought a nice electric <laughs> kettle to save on gas. First morning of Emma using it, she puts it on the bloody hob. Because you normally make my coffee. So the root cause of this, if you do, do if you do do a deep dive into it. The crux is, you didn't make my so coffee. So the root cause of this is you were too impatient and you couldn't wait. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, if you're going to buy an electric kettle, don't, don't put, put it, it on, on the hob. <laughs> I was devastated. It was not until I saw the blue flame lick up, lick, licking up like against the side of the kettle, I was like, oh shit. Nah. I was yeah. so upset. It still works though. No it dramas. does work. Just a bit of melted paint. Looks... We'll be alright. It's a turn it a different way. Yeah. I do like this kettle though. It's Shame a that kettle. the kettle comes with a lifetime guarantee, but I don't no, think it was guaranteed against <laughs> stupidity. So. You are so. <laughs> so we've done diesel. Yeah. We've done gas, coal. Um, we said we were going to make a conscious effort to try and not burn as much coal we this did. year, but it doesn't really work. Um, wood's okay if you've got, you know. A, little garden mooring and you've got plenty of room to store wood and let it all dry out for the year otherwise it's a bit of a okay. it's a bit of a non-starter as we found out um so yeah coal it's it's a necessary evil i think really mm. um we've spent 210 pounds this year on on coal well in a year yeah yeah this year yeah, yeah. um so what was that? Seventeen pound fifty a month. It averages out to, but obviously we only sort of burn it for six months, six of, months the, of the year. Six months of the year. Um, never ever bought wood in the four years we've had the boat, have we? Because we might have bought some kindling. Possibly, maybe once or twice. Um, but but yeah, if um, you know solid fuel stove is your only source of heating, you could probably factor in. At least the same again for wood if you were mm. if you were going to buy it. Um, I'm too tight, <laughs> and if there's anything free, I'll I'll go and take it. Um, it does come back to that compromise thing again, though, doesn't it? Yeah. In the early days, when we were new to this, we did buy wood. Yeah, and then we as we bought logs and we bought kindling. Yeah, but we haven't for probably a good three years a now. We haven't no. bought any any wood. Um, but yeah, it comes down to the compromise of time again, you know, me sitting breaking up a pallet and, oh, and what, you know, it's, it's a good hour breaking up a pallet yeah. and getting it into usable kindling, but that saves me probably like 30, <laughs> 30 quid and I'm I'm happy at 30 quid an hour, that'll <laughs> that'll do me. That free wood did cost us a pallet breaker though. I found out pallets are the best source of wood because you, you can find wood along the canal, but you can never be sure how dry it is or how long it's been there so if you can buy if you can find yourself some heat treated kiln dried pallets mm. there's no chemicals in them and you know it's you know it's dry wood um i think pallet break cost me 30 quid but you I've, loved it i've definitely had my <laughs> you were so word. happy with that uh, the pallet pallet <laughs> breaker pallet, where is it in the engine room it's in the engine room yeah, yeah. pallet breaker 3000 we call it but i don't think that's what it's actually yeah. called i think it's a rough neck pallet breaker but yeah money well spent if you ask me Mm -hmm. Oh, next topic. If you're eating your dinner, maybe skip this this next bit. <laughs> toilets. <laughs> nobody, yes. nobody who lives in a house normally talks about toilets. You it's don't a, think about it. It's a, it's a weird old subject, isn't it? Yeah. You're right. People don't think yeah. about it. They flush. It you don't have to flush and forget, and that's what that's what they say. But mm. on on a boat, you can't no. do that. So everybody everybody talks about toilets on boats. It's it's. <laughs> It's quite funny, really, because anybody who doesn't live on a boat won't go to the toilet anywhere apart from home. No. <laughs> and then anybody who lives on a boat we'll go anywhere. goes to the toilet anywhere <laughs> but home because you, you've got to empty so out true. at home. So, yeah. Wild weeds are a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> They're real. Anyway, there are three main types of toilet. You've got your pump-out toilet, which essentially is a big old tank which stores everything and then you have to pay somebody to go and get it emptied out yeah. that sits you, under your bed normally sits under your bed yeah 
Um, and, and they, so they are probably the most convenient in terms of you don't have to touch the waste or do anything mm. with it. Um, but they're probably the smelliest, like from what we've experienced, because oh, it, it, it can it well, can it stink. When it gets full, um, it's probably the most expensive yeah. and probably the most limiting because it costs you twenty to thirty pounds, depending on where you are, to mm. get it pumped out. You'll need to do that depending on how many of you are on the boat every sort of two to six weeks, I reckon. It wastes your water, which is not an unlimited resource. Your tank can only hold so much, oh, so you're. About that. You're flushing water just into your tank, um, and it limits where yes. where you can go because mm. you know if you've got to get your tank emptied in two weeks, you've got to make sure that in two weeks' time you're going to be near somewhere, somewhere that can, that can mm. pump it out. So, and it's not very glamorous. No, no, it's someone with a big it, vacuum just basically sucks glamorous. all the crap out of your tank. <laughs> so that was what was on our boat when we first bought it, and mm. I think we paid about three times to get it emptied, and then mm. thought sack that <laughs> yeah that was so, my introduction to boating we we opted uh for a compost toilet uh, but before we talk about that and the cost of that we'll talk about a cassette toilet um which is probably the most popular i think on on canal boats um if you've ever had a caravan or camping holiday you've mm -hmm. you'll probably know what a cassette toilet is it's yay big you can store probably mm, four days at a push if you if you depends you know, on what you drink yeah, and eat. <laughs> maybe oh. maybe three four days, um, and then your cassette is full. And again, you've got to go and find somewhere to empty it out. Bonus of that is they're generally free. Uh, some marinas might charge a small fee to empty your toilet. Yeah. Um, it's not very pleasant emptying a cassette out if you've no. ever ever done it. Trying to find an L side, it's, it's it's not it's not easy. No. So yeah, dotted around. So in, in with your 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 license fee. Um, as well as your water and your rubbish, they do provide L sand disposal points. And I do think yeah. there are some self pump outs for anyone who's got a, I've seen a, a pump couple, out toilet. I've seen a couple, but not um, any. Only down south, really, never really up there, up yeah. north. So, so, yeah, it is a bit limiting again, but not as limiting because there are more L sand points than, than there are pump out yeah. points. Um, cassettes, the only cost involved in cassettes Just are probably the chemicals, the chemicals that mm. you that you have to use so that might cost you a few quid each month just to top up your chemicals um again they waste a bit of water so not necessarily the best if you if you're on a limited water supply like you are on a boat so we have a composting toilet we do and um, they get a lot of stick and i understand why they, they get, get a lot of, lot of stick. <laughs> yeah i understand why they do because there's a lot of people out there that get a compost toilet and they don't compost it and I just do not see the point. So they'll bag it and bin it or chuck it somewhere. Do they? Yeah, which which CRT have said you shouldn't be doing from now on anyway and now on oh, anyway. I remember the week they that. they yeah, used yeah. to let you put it in their bins, which is a bit grim to be fair. Um and it sort of defeats the whole purpose of having a compost toilet. Um, compost toilets basically some people call them separating toilets because the mm -hmm. composting doesn't actually happen in the toilet itself it you starts do a whole the, video on that though. yeah it starts the process off we'll, we'll talk about it's our toilet whole, later i reckon yeah. um but yeah it starts the process off but then you have to do a little bit more work to to actually compost it it's um, interesting i think definitely deserves its own video yeah so anyway if you do it properly it is the most eco-friendly yeah. and it is also the cheapest and the most convenient in terms of you don't have to go anywhere specific to yeah. empty it, but probably a little bit more time involved in actually making the composting work and setting it all up. Um, Did you say how much your car costs? Yeah, so the, the cost the cost involved in our compost toilet is we, we buy some coconut quar blocks which go in and we use one of those blocks every every few weeks. I've got it written down on my sheet somewhere. Six pound a month. Six pound a month. Yeah. Averaged over the year is is what it costs us to go to the toilet. Six pound a month is what it costs us to spend a penny. But you do see like, what, you do like a Sainsbury's there. toilet. I do like a Sainsbury's toilet. Yeah, as the <laughs> ones are always a bit meh. And Euro garages, if you spend a lot of time travelling on the road, their toilets are always abysmal. You get to know. A connoisseur, aren't if you? you can find a BP garage that's an M&S one. Oof, they are always, always very nice, yeah. He's you, not even joking. You get to know these things as a boater. <laughs> but you did a lot of travelling as well, though, didn't you, on yeah. the road? So that's that's toilets covered. Yep. Uh, 
Internet. Internet. Which is necessary for me to work from home. Yeah, it's not necessary for everybody. A lot no. of people, a lot of people might turn their hotspot on and mm. stick their phone in the window and and be happy at that. But we we pay for our internet, so it's obviously a little bit different to a house. But it's it's pretty straightforward, really. We've got it is. we've got an antenna on the roof, um, mm. which comes with its own costs. I think that was about a hundred pound for the antenna, um, and then we've got a router that takes a little SIM card that plugs into that and antenna and I think the route was about £70 uh, and we've got a all you can eat data plan which costs us £30 a month so yeah there's a there's a few quid involved in setting Set up the up. system um, but ongoing costs £30 a month and we've we've we can I, I'm gonna say what 80% of the time where we've moored up we have got decent internet there's only been yeah. a couple of occasions yeah. where we've had to yeah. to move and only because everyone at work knows I live in an hour right? they they expect me to have a crap <laughs> yeah, yeah. but again. it's not been too bad actually we can normally get yeah. uh, 10 meg wherever we are and that's plenty enough for Emma to be on a zoom call to be fair meetings. even people that live at home and have proper internet at home sometimes Struggle they have sometimes. a crap internet yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, engine servicing yeah um, not my department. You don't necessarily have to give your house a, a service every now and then. You might have to service your boiler and stuff like that, I suppose. But, mm, yes. um, you know, if if your boiler breaks down, so what, you haven't got a bit of hot water. But if, if our engine breaks down, we haven't, you have you know, we haven't got propulsion, <laughs> potentially no hot water and potentially no electric if you use it to charge your batteries. So, yeah, you true. know, your engine can be a bit more critical, especially if you, you know, to to meet the CRT license terms and conditions you've got to move every every two weeks anyway so it's a bit more critical so uh, we've got an old old engine uh, a lot of people don't want to live with an old engine because for some reason they think it's going to bring them more trouble I would say it's actually if you know what you're doing it's actually easier to maintain an old engine than it is a new engine right. with all its newfangled bloody technology if you like fixing stuff there's, there's not a lot to go wrong on an old engine albeit we've had to <laughs> do a bit of work on it you have, lately have but uh, yeah servicing your engine once a year it costs us about 90 odd quid in, Must in have oil, oil and, and filters bits. basically um so yeah eight pound a month it's hardly gonna break the bank um <laughs> again everyone's costs are going to be different as you know, I do most of the stuff myself. Mm -hmm. If you're going to get an engineer in to service it, I think costly. I think you can probably add at least a hundred pounds onto that. I don't and think there's going to be anybody servicing your engine for less than that. Yeah, that's where the hidden um, cost is, I guess. Isn't yeah, it? so it'd be you know your ninety odd quid for your parts plus a hundred pound for your you know for your engineer. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something to to bear in mind. But yeah, it costs us eight eight pound a month for engine servicing. I would say um, next biggest expense after what, what was your biggest expense? Our biggest expense was the license, wasn't it? And then your next license, biggest one after that, coal or fuel or whatever. Yeah. Your next biggest one is going to be your blacking. blacking. So blacking is the paint that's on the boat underneath the waterline, basically. And there's there's two sorts of blacking. You get your your bitumen blacking. <laughs> and then your two pack blacking. <laughs> Q Emma's crap joke about some <laughs> some rapper that she He's always that she always says when I mention two pack products. That but was in your early videos. Yeah, so you, you can get bitumen bitumen paint or or two pack which has got like an inbuilt hardener. Um the two pack lasts a bit longer. Uh, any new boat that's been built within the last four or five years I would have thought should come with two pack mm. as as standard. If not have a word with your boat builder, tell them <laughs> and pull the finger yeah. out. So the difference between two pack and your bitumen blacking is basically two pack lasts longer. But why? Uh, it's got a hardener in it, so it's a two-part mix. So you mix in a hardener, ah, and then as it goes up, it hardens. Yeah, your bitumen will always stay stay a bit soft, and it it can it? yeah it will it it can wear off. So your two pack will last long. Your two pack can last yeah. sort of between five and ten years, depending on how good it's it's been put on. It's it's a lot in the prep really. You got to get your prep right. Um, your bitumen will only last you sort of twelve months to to two years. So you you black in. What? New game now. What's that? <laughs> spot the boat that's got bitumen or two. No, back you, you can spot the difference. Sorry. No, I would never have not. I would never be able to tell you. I'll be able to tell you the difference. You have to show me. I'll show you the difference. Um, 
So yeah, bitumen is going to cost you more in the in the, the long, long run, run. basically. Mm. Um, two pack, yes, it might be a faff to get it two done packs. initially because mm. you've got to strip it all back to bare metal. But then it's more cost effective. Going, the long it's, run. it's more cost effective. Um, just to confuse you even more. We actually have both, so we, uh, we have bitumen above the waterline and two pack below. The reason we've got bitumen above the waterline is because when the previous owner done all the work on the boat and he had the, the whole two packed, the two pack products weren't as good as they are now, and the, the two pack used to like go like a grey silvery colour in the in the I'm sun and he didn't want that above the waterline so it, that was just blacked above the waterline and it's two pack underneath to to keep the hull a bit more protected um cost of blacking will vary greatly depending on whether you want to do it yourself or whether the boatyard are going to do it for you uh the boatyard done it for us last year because basically just didn't have the time um and that cost us Two thousand pounds to get it blacked and our stern bands painted, which are the little red and white stripes at the at the back of the boat. Cute picture. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you've got it. You know. Um, yeah, if you do it yourself, probably around about a thousand, twelve hundred pounds to do it yourself. But then you've got to obviously factor in having you know two Let's or three out. days off work to you know put a few quotes coats on it. So whatever's best for you. But yeah, two thousand pounds would it cost us for a seventy foot boat. Obviously, the smaller the boat. The, the lower the cost because as with most things in the boat world it's all based on based yeah, on the length of your length. Lengthier boat so that works out if you if because we're two we packed under the water line oh. so for five years it works out 34 pound a month and we budget for all of this don't we we, budget we put, for all of this, we put yeah. money away we're, every month for all of this our last cost of living on a boat doesn't which is really unique I think. yeah it doesn't actually relate to living on a boat but it <laughs> does relate to living on a boat so we've got a little storage lockup that we that we pay for it is only tiny it's bloody it's expensive little. if you ask me but like the Taylor square meters if you really want but no, it's all right um what do we pay 70 pounds a month i think pounds. it is oh 60 pound 60 a month pound. we pay for storage um and it's only for it's more for sentimental stuff isn't it so it's like old furniture and stuff whereas yeah if we if we weren't on a boat and we were in a house then We'd we wouldn't have, have to house. pay that and but we did when we moved we don't it, want to get rid of it when so. we got the boat we did look at where we could put it but it just physically just will just, not yeah, fit on physically the boat. doesn't fit on the boat no. so uh, again something to to think about if you are thinking about moving on a, on a boat do you need to put stuff in storage because that's going to cost you but money it is also handy to like swap winter and summer stuff yeah, over. Yeah, so we, it, we, it went, we went to the lock-up at the weekend, didn't get we, and put, put and some winter stuff in, mm. get rid of the ash hoover and whatnot, and yeah. get the barbecue back out and some summer clothes and whatnot. So it, it does come in, in it does, useful. It is handy. Um, but yeah, again, not everybody will have that cost, mm. but it's a cost we have, and that's what this video is about, how much it costs us. us. So, yeah. I think that... Is everything, isn't it? That's all of our costs so put it all in on a boat. So what I'm going to do now, I'm, I'm not going to look at the camera because I can't look at the camera and look at my sheet. I'm going to run through the costs and as I run through them, I'll pop them up on the screen so you've got a, a snapshot of how much it costs us each month to live on our boat. Boat safety costs us £5 per month. Insurance costs us £37 per month. Boat licence costs us £114 a month. But it will be going up 5% year on year. So something yep. to bear in mind if you're looking at a boat. Fuel. Our diesel costs us £40 a month. Yeah. Our gas costs us £13 a month. Yeah. Our coal costs us £17.50 a month. Yeah. Our toilet costs us £6 per month. Yeah. Our internet costs us £30 a month. Yeah. Um, there are additional costs in, you know, like I say, getting your router on your aerial to get that set up, which was £170 to get it set up, I think. Uh, engine, engine servicing. Engine. I, I got servicing right that time. It That's was well engine done. I struggled with. Engine yeah. servicing costs us £8 a month. Yeah. Blacking, that costs us on average £34 a month. Yeah. Our storage costs us £60 a month. Yeah. So, in total, it costs us £364.50 a month to live on our boat. Wow. But, 
add an extra bit of money, I'll tell you why. What we do, so we know how much all this stuff's going to cost us, so we budget for that. Um, but not only that, we put, what do we put away each month? Is it £200? Yeah. We put £200 aside every, yeah, every month, month for just boat maintenance. Like, some months we might not even spend a single penny on it. No. But, you know, there's other months, just sits there, I don't know, helpful. like... A light break, so we buy new lights. We've got or, the, yeah, we did that at the boat maintenance. Yeah, or some muppet tries to clean the boat and scratches it, and then has to buy a load of polish and associated yeah. bits. So you're going to use it for the paint as well. Aren't yeah, you? so so there's there's different costs like that that pop up. Um, also, as well as you guys know, we're heading uh, into the Midlands to get some welding done on the boat, which we'll tell you more about in a few weeks. And we know that's going to be about a two thousand pound bill. Um, but because we've been putting that £200 aside, it doesn't come as a surprise, we've got it ready, it's not a problem. Because, you know, there will always be jobs to do on a boat that you just, you you can't plan for, you don't know it's going to happen. So there's there's always going to be something. So really it costs us £564.50. Yeah. So yeah, £364 is the, right. is the bare bones, but yeah. I would definitely put extra away for jobs that need doing um I, I will say as well like i do a lot on the boat that's, that's um you know a, a lot of people probably might not be as handy or practical so no. it will cost you a bit more as soon as as soon as you ring somebody up you know <laughs> expect it to be 100 pounds just for them to turn up at your at your boat before they put can, the bill in. Can you get insurance like if you like breakdown insurance? Yeah, you can actually. So there's a there's this like the AA or the RAC. They're called <laughs> the RCR, the River oh. and Canal Rescue. So you can pay a subscription. No, I don't no. have any prices to hand, but yeah, if <laughs> exactly if, if, you if you're not very handy, then then you perhaps join one of those and it might work out a little bit cheaper for you. Um, so yeah, that's that's our costs of, of living on a on a boat really. Um, I think I think a lot of those costs, some of them are probably cheaper because we do compromise on a on a few things. Like you know, we don't have the diesel heating where you can set your thermostat, so it mm. it, it takes me hours to you know sort out wood and and go and fetch coal and and whatnot. Yeah, I I think the biggest cost of living on a boat is time. Because there are some true. things you can't compromise on. So water, for example, you've got to go and travel to, to get, get to get your water. You've got to go and travel to empty your bins. You know, there's. You have there's... to make a, a conscious effort to do this. It doesn't yeah. just happen. You have to make a plan to do it to empty your bin to fill up your water. Yeah, and there are actually systems coming out now where a lot of people use water out of the canal. They don't use it for drinking, oh. um, but you could use it for showering and your washing machine. It goes through filters and, and whatnot and gets rid of all the nasties. So, you know, it is it is getting a bit more convenient to live on a boat, but yeah. if, if, you, if you're going to move onto a boat and, and think, That's oh, a tangent. it's exactly like a house, then you're in for, in for a shock because there are a lot of compromises that you, that you need to make. Um, yeah. Done. It's not though, is it? What do you mean? The cup's empty. <laughs> it's not over, we've got to finish on a joke, haven't we? No. We spoke about no, finances and, and money. <laughs> Did you hear about the bloke who made a lot of money investing in apples? He was insider trading. <laughs> it's just... Do you get it? It's just in, awful. Insider. I say, I, I say in, again. Insider. It's not at the same level as your maroon joke. No. It's right. it's I'll, it's. I'll try another one for a, next week. Yeah, join us next week. I don't know. Maybe, shit jokes. Maybe, <laughs> and maybe a bit more cruising or something. We'll see. But yeah, hope see you enjoyed happens. the video. Something a yeah. bit different anyway. That's bye from us. See you later. See ya. <laughs>